And subhanAllah, this is truly my favorite session because you can imagine now, after 13 years in Mecca, the relationship the Prophet ﷺ has with Jibreel ﷺ. Now they're beyond fully acquainted with one another. Now there is pure love between them. When the Prophet ﷺ made Hijrah to Medina, there is a particular man, and you're going to wonder why I'm bringing him into the picture, but inshallah ta'ala you'll understand. There is a particular companion by the name of Hassan ibn Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hassan ibn Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu, his job, he was a poet, and he actually used to get paid for his poetry. You know why? Because his poetry was to diss people, right? He was a professional disser, literally. He'd get paid by people to look at you and to tell you how ugly you were and tell you how poor you were and tell you how low your family was and tell you how raggedy your clothes look. And <laughs> Hassan literally made a living. I know that's an awesome job, right? He literally made a living off of that. Looking at people and putting them down, tearing them up on behalf of someone else. So Hassan's from Medina. They hired him to go out and see the Prophet ﷺ when they were entering into Medina so that he could author a poem about him. So all the Ansar are waiting in the trees, waiting outside, waiting for him every day. Hassan's just standing there waiting for him as well, so that he could author that poem. So when the Prophet ﷺ enters into Medina, instead of saying anything bad about him, Hassan's like, I've got nothing. He authors one of the most beautiful poems about the Prophet ﷺ in history. And he becomes Muslim on the spot. So Hassan accepted Islam, the moment the Prophet ﷺ entered into Medina. Now here's the thing, the Prophet ﷺ obviously had his share of naysayers in Medina as well. People that would mock him and some people that would come and challenge him in very you know, conniving ways and things of that sort. But the Prophet ﷺ was kind, he was humble, he wouldn't respond on, on behalf of himself most of the time. So Hassan ibn Thabit took it upon himself to basically defend the Prophet ﷺ against anyone that said anything about him. So a person says something about the Prophet ﷺ, walks in the masjid and disrespects him, Hassan stands up and starts going off on him. And Hassan also stands up and starts saying beautiful things about the Prophet ﷺ. So he authored poetry in praise of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Sahaba loved it. They loved it to a point that they built him a manbar. In the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ, there was a manbar for the Prophet ﷺ. The companions actually built a pulpit for Hassan to stand up and respond to people whenever they came and spoke to the Prophet ﷺ. So Hassan anhu stands up for the first time on that manbar. The Prophet ﷺ looks at him and his eyes get really big. So they come to the Prophet ﷺ and they say, Ya Rasulullah, what is it? He said, Jibreel is with him right now. Jibreel is standing with Hassan right now. And in fact, every single time Hassan stood up to speak, the Prophet ﷺ would say, Uhjul mushrikeen ya Hassan, fa inna Jibreel ma'ak. Respond to them, O oh Hassan, Jibreel is with you right now. And as Hassan would be about to stand up to speak, the Prophet ﷺ would make the dua, Allahumma ayyidhu bi ruh al Qudus. O oh Allah, support him with the Holy Spirit, with Jibreel alayhi salam. So Hassan stands up there, Jibreel automatically comes down and starts helping Hassan in responding to the things that are said about the Prophet ﷺ. You wanna know what's amazing about that? And Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, when anyone responds to insults on behalf of the Prophet ﷺ, and obviously we've got to qualify, it doesn't mean killing cartoonists, and it doesn't mean Paris, and it doesn't mean that stuff. It means when you intellectually defend the Prophet ﷺ, when you, when you, when you remove the doubts about his character, when you respond to the things that are said about him, Jibreel alayhi salam would support him. His proof, the ayah and Surah Al-Mujadila, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله. So he said, you would not, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, you would not find a people who believe in Allah in the last day that love those that 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 show enmity to Allah and the Messenger of Allah, even if it was their families, their fathers, their brothers, whatever it may be. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says at the end of it, what? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has written 
faith in their hearts. And what does he say at the end of that ayah? وَأَيَّدَهُمْ بِرُوحٍ مِنْ And he supports them with the spirit from him. Ibn al-Qayyim says, when anyone responds, and subhanAllah, I can tell you, ask anyone that's in the field of da'wah that speaks, when you start talking about the character of the Prophet ﷺ, it's different. I've never had a conversation with anyone about the character of the Prophet ﷺ responding to anything that was said about him, except that the other person was convinced. I've never seen people you know, not moved by the character of the Messenger ﷺ. And obviously, when you respond to all the terrible lies that are said about him in the media and so on and so forth. That's a way to actually bring Jibreel into your life practically. Respond on behalf of the Prophet ﷺ and Jibreel comes into your life.